task is to bring this minority together in such a way that it makes it impossible for the legacy of whiteness to continue to reproduce itself. With only a cursory examination, one can readily observe an overarching theme that now pervades all Western advertising, television, and every manner of visual media. A passing glance immediately reveals, in stark contrast to those all around him, the painfully obvious, almost effete, new white male. In the vast majority of productions, he is portrayed as a weak, vacillating caricature, always in need of being clued in by the female superiors around him always deferring to the instructions and moral directives of specifically placed minorities whenever his character is exposed. Additionally, he now must seek guidance from these very non-white protagonists whenever a universal perspective is sought, at which moment he is spoken down to with undertones of condescension and contempt, and sometimes even bitter hate. If by pure luck, this lone white half-man does indeed win the girl, or has been transformed into some good guy killing machine, he must absolutely suspend his heroic stature whenever in the presence of a female or minority figure, whose superior natures cannot be questioned. Nor does it matter what narrative format or storyline is being presented. The western white male is forever in need of repair from his toxic masculinity, as defined by any and all around him. The social engineering goal behind this alarming policy is obvious. By eliminating white masculinity altogether, you remove the white male from reproductive dominance. Once this is achieved, it then only takes a few short generations to exterminate his race completely. The target audiences of this agenda are 1. Ethnic European females, particularly those with aspirations of family building, who will be forced to perceive their natural sexual mating cohort with disdain or suspicion, and thereby consider non-white mating choices. 2. Non-white ethnic enclaves, specifically those with high in-group awareness, that are waiting to assert their cultural dominance once social barriers have been sufficiently weakened. And three, ethnic European males themselves, whose morale and defensive instincts will slowly be worn down, eventually succumbing to this persistent form of soft psychological warfare. The power of visual media to collectively steer entire populations is well documented. It is no wonder that by the end of the First World War, certain groups began fighting for control of this culture-making vehicle. Over a century of subtly perfecting techniques, the visual cultural matrix and its component industrial complex has had a virtual chokehold on the redevelopment of Western civilization, and the sponsors of its new narratives have nothing but a sheer, all-encompassing hatred of the white male, his natural disposition, his historical achievements, intellectual acumen, and in particular, his masculinity, which has been the glue that held Western culture together for millennia. This quasi-military campaign being waged against white male populations will not end. It has been designed from the outset with a singular goal. Its cultural Marxist and neoliberal generals, camped in their production studios, special committees, and boardrooms, simply no longer have any connection to the cultures and peoples from which they descended, being either alien to European ethnies or so deracinated and global in their outlook that their open treason now no longer matters to them. It is high time to understand that this point of issue is the core premise behind everything happening in the Western culture war at present. This cannot be emphasized enough. Backwards engineer all the social or cultural phenomena from the past 50 years within Western civilization and it is overwhelmingly clear what this has been all about. If Europeans can ever reassert their dominance in the nations and homelands that is their birthright, then white masculinity must be venerated and nationalized again pushed into every social contact vector with extreme prejudice and become the central functioning mantra within our own circles again. It must become our new religion, our sexual ethos, and weapon if we have any chance of success in the upcoming battle being prepared for us. And God knows, we shall have it.